start. Uh, first off, great to see you all here. Uh, two questions, one for Mike, one yeah. for Greg. Mike, I'm a huge fan of the Soul Reaver games. I especially love your portrayal of Raziel. Oh, God, yeah. Do you, <laughs> do you have any uh, interesting stories or memories about working on the set of, or on the, uh, the booth of Soul Reaver? And for Greg, do you have any interesting stories about working on Duckman as Cornfed? Well, Soul Reaver, because he was English, and I'm working with Simon Templeton and Alastair Duncan, I was in, I was, I figured I was going to be in trouble because they are indeed the real thing. So I, I had to, I had to make sure, and I, it was very funny because as I'm doing the character, obviously, and Simon reacts and I'm listening to him. So as I'm going along and I think I have him down, I'm listening to him and I'm thinking in the back of my head, oh, I don't have this at all. What, where are my, oh, they're going to know that I'm a phony. They're going to know this is not, this is not really good. And no one caught on, which was nice. <laughs> so I continued on, and, uh, and uh, Gordon Hunt, the director, said, no, we're good. If, if, if I was off a little bit, he'd pull me back. But I was always, I always needed to see a, the approval from Simon and the approval from Alistair, because these were really, these are talented guys, but they are from across the pond. And I'm this kid from Brooklyn playing an, you know, playing an, an, a, a, an Englishman. But it worked for me. Um, silliness takes place, of course, within the framework in, of the, uh, uh, while you're in there, while you're in the session. And uh, it's stuff I probably can't talk about because there's kids in the room. <laughs> but other than that. Um, for those of you who don't know, Cornfed was a little... Uh, detective pig who wore a stingy brimmed hat and a skinny tie and had to save the duck. Uh, so it was kind of the essence of turning it, basically a monotone character into an interesting character, but I watched too many dragnets growing up, so I was in, I was in good shape. Um, yeah, the most interesting, I hope, is um, I was in Russia. I was in Moscow doing a Police Academy 7 mission to Moscow. Uh, in film, I play Yuri Talinsky from Russian police, and I'm butting head with American Police Academy people. And um, we were there during the attempted overthrow of the Russian government, and that was dicey because they actually had a company meeting where they said, "You don't think I never thought this would be said to me in uh, in my real life lifetime?" But they said, "Keep your suitcases in the ready to close position." If things go bad, you'll be flown to, where did they say? You'll be flown to such and such a city to await further instructions, which sounds like every espionage movie you've ever heard. Um, it was during the recording of Duckman that uh, they allowed me to go to do the filming. They sent me with this very, very high-tech condenser recorder. So um, I had to explain that at customs going into, uh, going into Russia. Plus, everyone on the plane with me, um, it was a British Airways plane, and all of them were reporters going to cover what could have been a very, very dangerous situation. They heard I was going to do essentially slapstick comedy, and they thought that was the funniest thing they'd ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I went through, it was the experience of my lifetime, because all of my ancestry comes from that part of Russia, actually uh, Ukraine. But... Uh, the, the directors and producers were on the line he, in Los Angeles. They called me in my hotel, which was built essentially of concrete. It was like a, a, a bunker. Uh, and I would record over the phone till they approved takes, all, all with the condenser mic record, re, uh, digital audio tape recorder on. Uh, I would send, they agreed to send my select takes with the film package so it would go overnight to Hollywood and a messenger would come and from Warner Brothers they would retrieve the Duckman tape and take that back to Klasky Chupo. So I, I literally was two places at one time, which was unbelievable. And uh, had I not gotten back in time to do my own looping of my own character, uh, which I did, they said the quality of the tapes because of the construction of the hotel was so good that if they had had to, they could have cut it into the show without it being really noticeable. So that was amazing. 
the other really memorable was uh, we had a lot of guest stars on that show. Everybody wanted to do that show. But uh, James Brown with his, with his entourage came in and we did an episode where I get to say, Duck man, if I can't talk you out of the, that shed, perhaps the godfather of soul himself, James Brown. And then he, James Brown comes on, he says, duck, duck man, get out of that shed. Come on, duck man. So, and I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, and I told him that I had seen him. Uh, I, one of my friend's father was a concert promoter, and there was a group of us looking conspicuously Caucasian in the third row center. Uh, and, uh, I mean, brilliant shows, and, and he said, Ah, Keel Auditorium, I love Keel Auditorium. St. Louis, very good audience for me. So I, I'm sitting there with James Brown uh, having a conversation, and he's on my show. Uh, it, it just blew my mind. Many things have blown my mind, but that's way up there. <laughs>